can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. We have new developments in the crisis in Syria today as the country moves closer to civil war. The Baba Amur district of the city of Homs has been under siege for over a month. On Thursday, Syria's main opposition group formed a military bureau, which the Syrian National Council says is to deal with the rebel army and protect peaceful protesters. The United Nations has called on Syria authorities to allow immediate and unrestricted humanitarian aid to all people in need of assistance. However, emergency supplies have been blocked from entering Baba Amur as of Friday morning. North Korea has suspended its nuclear weapons test and uranium enrichment in exchange for food and aid from the United States. The U this would allow international UN inspectors to monitor activities at its main nuclear complex in Yongbyon. It could also indicate a change in the country's behavior since Kim Jong-un has succeeded his father. President Obama called this move important if limited. In the past, North Korea agreed to hold off on nuclear efforts but then has backed out of the agreement. But North Korea claims it will carry out the arrangement as long as talks proceed fruitfully. And the GOP primaries battled on this week. All eyes were on Michigan frontrunners Mitt Romney's home state. A few weeks ago, he was behind the Michigan polls to candidate Rick Santorum. Although he clenched the win this week, it was only by three points. Because the race was so close, he and Santorum received the same number of delegates. Romney, Romney also came out on top in Arizona and Wyoming. Now the candidates are gearing up for next week's Super Tuesday, with 10 states holding primaries on Tuesday. More delegates can be won on this day than any other. Thousands of walkers and runners are expected to show up at Balboa Park this weekend to honor Chelsea King. The Poway teenager was murdered by a violent sex offender in 2010. She was running along the trail in Rancho Bernardo. Tomorrow is the second finished Chelsea Run 5K. It starts at 7.30 in the morning. And with gas prices rising every single day, it's putting a strain on the wallet. AAA and the Oil Price Information Service reported the average price of a gallon of regular gasoline in San Diego is $4.35, and the prices are still climbing. Two major Southern California refineries have temporarily shut down for maintenance to comply with federal clean air mandates. And with the oil prices surge after Iran cut off the exports to Britain and France, most of the oil that the United States imports is from Mexico, Canada, and Saudi Arabia. Since oil is an international traded commodity, Iran's decision is affecting prices everywhere, and consumers are gassed. Analys an analysis states that the price will probably reach $5 or more a gallon this summer. A popular hair treatment is being removed from many salons after clients and stylists were exposed to a high levels of formaldehyde. Ashley Custer has the story. Beautiful, frizz-free hair. But at what cost? The FDA and Occupational Health and Safety Administration recently found levels of formaldehyde to be 52 times the legal limit. The Brazilian blowout and other keratin hair treatment products claim to be formaldehyde-free. But test results showed some contained up to 10.4% of the chemical known to cause cancer. Some stylists have reported having nosebleeds, eye irritation, and trouble breathing while performing the blowout on clients. But even with the new findings, some people still think the end result is worth the risk. Yeah, like hearing those stats like do concern me, but I think it really has like helped my confidence and like helped my life. So like I don't really, I know that it's bad, but I don't really think it's like that bad. Melissa Carson has had what she calls unmanageable hair almost her entire life. But people are kind of surprised when they see that like my hair used to look like that and like my hair now because they would never have guessed that I have such like intense curly hair. Carson has had three treatments and remembers some side effects. My eyes are like a little like watery and my nose is kind of sensitive. Carson still feels like the product has changed her hair and confidence for the better. When you get something done like this like it's like a wow factor kind of. We've contacted over 40 different salons in the San Diego area. Each one declined to comment and refused an on-camera interview. I'm here with photojournalist Jennifer Hua. I'm Ashley Custer, News Scene. And the company who makes the Brazilian blowout has now settled the class auction suit against them. It has agreed to change the advertising and marketing 
products so consumers are aware of the ingredients. And Beijing hosted the Summer Olympics four years ago, and now it's London's turn to show the world how it's done. Here's Wani Wade with everything we need to know in sports. Well, thank you, Manny, and that's the truth. With the 2012 um, Olympic Games just around the bend, London is gearing up in a big way. They've built 34 venues, prepared 8,000 torches, and sold 8.8 .8 million tickets. Hosting the World Game is not something that should be taken lightly. Dressing entails uh, everything from huge sets of rings like this to the lamppost banners to decals on the floor to stencils on the windows. We are, we've been working on this plan now for two years on the, on the dressing, employing some of London's best design agencies. And this year's Daytona 500 was scheduled to run last Sunday. But for the first time in 54 years, the race was postponed due to rain. It was rescheduled for Monday morning until cloudy skies brought rain yet again. Finally, Monday evening, it subsided, and the first night race of the Daytona 500 took place. Matt Kenseth won, although Danica Patrick was the one who took most of his spotlight. After crashing in her qualifying run on Thursday and spinning out again on Saturday, Patrick was taken out in the second lap by Jimmy Johnson and didn't finish the race. She's the third woman ever to race in the Daytona, along with legends Janet Guthrie from 1977 and Shauna Robinson in 2002. But Daytona wasn't the only thing making headlines in Florida this weekend. The 2012 NBA All-Star Game took place in Orlando. Kobe made history by passing Michael Jordan's 264-point record in his 13th All-Star Game appearance. But Dwayne Wade didn't care. In the third quarter, Wade plays some strong D against Kobe and manages to fracture his nose. Kobe found out later in the week that he may be concussed, but was cleared to play against Minnesota on Wednesday evening. West beat East 152-149, to 149, and Kevin Durant was the MVP. And speaking of MVPs, the MLB MVP Ryan Braun may have dodged his 50-game suspension after his herpes medication caused him to fail a drug test, but he isn't out of the woods just yet. Dino Lorenzi Jr. is being accused of tampering with Braun's sample after an improper collection. However, Braun signed a document stating his sample was collected properly and protocol was followed. He's the first player ever to appeal a positive test charge, in the, um, but the investigation is ongoing. Padre Spring Training. Well, you know, the pods have well taken underway from Peoria, Arizona, and the strong new additions at the pitching position may lead to the first possibility of a no-hitter game. That would be the first time for the Padres at Petco and for the Padres organization itself. Andrew Kashner and his 100-mile-an-hour fastball made the move from, from the Cubbies in Chicago, along with Houston Street from the Rockies. Kashner replaces Mike Adams, who was traded to the Rangers, and Street takes Heath Bell's eighth inning, eighth inning slot. The Friars' home opener takes place April 5th against the Dodgers. And last but not least, changes have been made regarding the NFL season opener. For the last 10 years, the NFL kicked off its season on a Thursday, but not this year. President Obama is scheduled to speak at the Democratic National Convention, so the NFL decided to change the date. The 2012 season opener will now take place on Wednesday, September 5th. You may remember last year's season opener when the Saints played the Packers in Green Bay, or you may not. For us here in San Diego, that was the night of the power outage that caused NFL fans throughout Southern California, Arizona, and even south of the border to miss the first game after the lockout. Do you guys remember that when all the power went out? Yeah, that's right. That's crazy. The whole, almost the half of the country was out of light. I was so mad. I was looking forward to football after the lockout, and I just didn't get it. It was so sad. Thank you for that, Ronnie. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Nice, Dad. Nice, Dad. Nice, Dad. Charles! Nice, Dad. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of siblings in foster care who'll take you just as you are. Looking for something to do this week? 
There is a weekly gathering in Oceanside offering live music, food, and much more. New scene Kayla Gomes has the story. Every Thursday night, the street lights up on Main Street in Oceanside at the Sunset Market. This market is special because of where it's located, Oceanside, California. Eclectic, unique, diverse, it's just a great beach city and it, it makes a great market. But it's more than just a typical street fair, featuring some of the most unique vendors San Diego has to offer. Surprise, surprise, for 20, woo! The name of our business is Fashionista Design. We're Oceanside residents and we always enjoyed the Sunset Market. It's beautiful and we have a hobby and we wanted to develop it and share it with the public. And here at the Sunset Market, there's a great variety of all different kinds of things from products to, of course, food. This is something that's very different to my taste buds goat meat. So here it goes. I've never tasted this. I don't think I've ever had a goat before. I like goat cheese though. Hot. Every booth has a different approach, usually from a different part of the world. So if you didn't know, then now you do. The Sunset Market is fun for the family and a great place to come support your neighbors. I'm a hot dog piece of ham. I like to move like that. With photojournalist Don Perez, I'm Kayla Gomes. New scene. The Sunset Market.